This is your weekend market recap for Friday, June 24th, 2022. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is my channel to help investors and traders develop a probability-based mindset to succeed. Also try and keep friends informed of what's going on in the markets and the economy, and also a little real estate content as well. This is Dan Max at EXP Realty, aka The Trading Agent, and this is your weekend market recap for Friday, June 24th, 2022. Let's get into it. Again, appreciate everybody's support this week. Great, amazing week. Folks who were trading with us and learning. I feel like there's been some breakthroughs in some of the newer folks. Things are starting to make sense. As again, as we paint the picture every day, every week with these recaps, I'm hoping they start to make sense of how the mentality of anticipating moves and being in front of things is really how you leverage knowledge to make really good money in trading. Again, reacting to the news and being late and chasing things, very difficult position to be in trading. It's really all about being in front of the move so that you can leverage it correctly, can make money off of it, and also have the best risk reward. Because by the time you jump into something that's already up or down, the risk versus reward dramatically changes. People are starting to see that. It's awesome. Again, if you're newer, please check out the Discord room. This is where we talk about this stuff all the time. Friends, family, all sorts of people in here who are helping out, trying to help others learn. Again, if you're newer, it's a good place to start because there's a ton of resources. I say this every video. And when people come in here, they ask a lot of questions. And it's like, hey, check out the side rooms. I guarantee there's some information you're looking for potentially here. So on that note, let's get into it. Bitcoin. Oops. What have we said? Chopping doesn't really tell you anything. That's not what people want to hear. They want to say, hey, it's going to 10,000 or is it going to 30,000? I can't really tell you. When you zoom in, I think it's fairly obvious. You need to get over, say, 21,500, put through 22,000. I mean, just whatever number you think to break out of this range. If it does, I would say this low at 25,700 becomes pretty logical. Maybe even the 26.5. Again, this is very oversold. Don't be surprised if it does bounce. But also, too, we are a bear market. If something changes dramatically, this could get liquidated again. I, I don't necessarily trust gold, Bitcoin, any of this stuff because it's not acting as hedges in irrational times. People don't understand that. Like, yes, in irrational times, Things that are supposed to be rational, like do certain things, don't line up. Because again, if liquidation is happening, people have to sell their winners and their losers. Again, think about a margin call. If you've got X, A, B, C, D, E, F, G stocks and you're down a ton, you got to sell. It doesn't matter. There's no, all of them are likely to be sold potentially. USO, we've talked about this coming up here to retest the old highs. We said, hey, if you're watching this, don't be surprised if it bounces. We talked about the ranges. You'll see it better on the USO. But in my mind, I thought you had somewhere in like the 102 to 100 area as a bounce point near term. Again, I still think this is going lower. This is a double top. It's just it's not going to be every day down. And I, I tell that to people all the time in trends is that you got to beware. Nothing goes in a straight line. The one thing that I will say I think that will ultimately help the market out, and this is why I am bullish going into the end of the quarter. If you're not familiar with why end of the quarter matters, Again, check out the Discord room. Here is a side room video. I'll drop it top corner, but let me see if I can find it. Not pro gaps. Do, 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 do. Why the last three and first three trading days of the month matter. Check that video out. I think it'll help you out. On that note, oh, ah, sorry, I apologize. On that note, I still think oil is a top going lower and it'll help rally the market. Because again, the market is scared of inflation. Oil dropping changes the inflation narrative, does it not? TLT. All right. Again, what do we need to see? Lower rates. And what do we talk about? Coming into the 20 day off the lows, we talked about could be resistance. It actually was today. If you bought a little today on the dip, I don't blame you. Now, again, are we going to come back down to the 108, 109? At this point, the risk is likely not. Think about it. Outside the channel, multi day range, novice gap, professional gap, chilling. Again, Every day doesn't go in your favor. If you don't get that about trading, you are missing the under, like underlying action as it is. You're projecting what you want to see versus what actually happens. Choppiness is part of the game. Monthly, again, this is why we are looking at the lows. It says somewhere between 110, 108, 2018, uh, 2018 lows. I mean, just you can see this, this whole area 
on the TLT has been important. You see it was the highs there, it was the lows here, it was the like compressed under here, held here. Point being, again, when people say support equals resistance, they go, oh, it has to be one point. No, mm -mm, it can be a range. The dollar, here's another thing that we've talked about acting strong, holding up, probably gonna break out when the market ready for the next leg down, or it could just chop out for a little while. It, it, at this point, I don't see a bear trend. Some people might say that's a look above and fail. You could say it's a 17 different things. At this point, I just don't believe the dollar ultimately is going much lower until the market capitulates and the Fed say, hey, we need to print more money. We need to change our tune. We need to lower rates. They're projecting another 75 uh, basis point rate hike coming up. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be mean at all. What I'm trying to say is don't be surprised, okay? Don't be surprised when the dollar hangs up and at some point later this summer you get more weakness in the market. We are due for a bear market rally. Let's talk about it. Why? The VIX said this many a times, right? We got up here, it compressed, it couldn't get higher. We are going into earnings, so it's probably going to pull back. And you go, well, why does earnings matter? Why does seasonality matter? All right, here you go. This is this is the kind of resources you get with our website or with my website, with the room. Where is it? Uh, reference articles. Here you go. Do do do. That's you know, those are option rules. Seasonality. Here we go. Expect chop in the summer. Watch for entries toward the last few days of the month. This is June. Are we not at the last few days of the month? July earnings. The first half can be good, but watch for profit taking near the middle of July. Seasonality wise, July 4th at time, markets typically rally into because it's holidays. On that note, if you know that and the market's oversold going into earnings, the VIX compressed at the highs, could not make new highs, what's probably going to happen? End of order markup, markdowns, whatever you want to call it, you're probably coming back down to range lows. Keep in mind, the last time we had hit lows, look at that, early April. Here's another early lows, early January. Again, these were all bear market rallies or whatever rallies you want to call it, but they are all around the first of the month. I hope people, again, because I, I say in the Discord room, like, hold your winners, hold your, you know, hold on. Like, if you know what you got and when it's good, it's be smart. But a lot of people, I mean, I just, a lot of people are just winging it. And if they don't watch these videos, that's why I'm like, I, I don't mind talking about it in the Discord room. And then you know, sometimes say, hey, you're being, a, you're being mean to people. And it's like, no. I'm laying out all the evidence very clearly in these videos. And if you don't have the time to watch it, I, don't, I mean, again, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. And meaning that if you want to do homework and you want someone to help you out and give you the answers, that's what we're trying to do. But if you were just winging this day to day, it's really hard. I mean, I, there's a reason why I even do these videos. I tell people all the time, it helps me see my pictures clearly. And when I say my pictures, again, it's my interpretation of the market. But I'm being evidence-based. If you couldn't make higher highs, what do you think? It means you're going back down the range of lows. Now, again, does it happen in one day? No. No, no, no. It just takes time. All right, I hope this helps. Spy, let's get into it. I said this a bazillion times. Watch the range low. Watch this 360s area. Could it have gone lower? Yes. We we never put in our mind that it couldn't. But what did we say? You're back at the highs from 2020. It's really choppy here. It's Again, is it an exact price? I, I reference this all the time. No, it's not. We talked about this could be a novice gap. And then look at this three-day range chop. Boom. Bam. Whatever you want to call it. People keep going, well, there, you know, the, the market can't go that much higher. It's like everybody's bearish. It actually can. One of the things that we always talk about is gapping, like meltdown action preceding a what? A trend change. Same thing with the melt up. Look at this. Big gap. And I, and I said this in the previous videos. One gap, two gap, three big gaps to exhaust the down move in the near term. Now, again, I'm not trying to talk loud to be... Like it gets you excited, but it's more just, hey, we're talking about this stuff in the previous videos. Please pay attention because this is the kind of move, again, out of below the channel. Remember, we talk about the blowouts below the channels usually are the trend changes near term. Now, I'm not saying we're going back to 480. What I am referencing is that we were oversold. We're going into the end of the month. Here's the, here you go, a couple days into the month. Is it possible we get up to 410 to 415? Put that in your mind. That's a possible upside. Okay? 
410, 415. Spy, write it down. I'm going to write it down. I think that's the first resistance. Why? It's the 50 day and it's the old highs. Now, again, if this is a legitimate bear market rally, notice here, we made a higher high over the previous low. Okay, Dan, well, then can you say we can get up to 420, 425? That now becomes the max upside, right? If we're seeing repeating patterns here, right? Rally, all right, exhaustion, bigger rally, goes above the highs, then fails. You have to be aware of this. Because again, here's the same thing. You had multiple tops, a little higher high, then boom. I don't think people are looking for that higher high. And again, if you are newer to trading and you're like, what the heck are you talking about? Study their patterns. I would tell people all the time, if you're watching the markets during the day, you are learning nothing about the market. You have to study the past. And if you don't, well, what are you doing? You're trying to get rich staring at the current action when the past is literally full of bazillion examples of what you need to study and look for while the per while the present moment is just one moment in time the past is your leverage friends it's your options it's your way of getting rich and i say this all the time but no one pays attention they don't want to spend the time playing the game where i call it guess the next candle where you would go all right i'm looking at this action it's probably going to come back down to the range lows oh it did it blew below it now what probably going to pop up Made a higher low, probably goes higher. And you can start doing this game in your mind. And you get very good at predicting the next candle. But no one ever does that. Except for me. I did it for years. And I still do it in my mind. I'm doing it as we speak every day in these recaps. Guess the next move. Guess the next candle. What is coming next? If you can recognize that, and you can figure that out on your own, isn't that the goal to make money? Now, again, people go, well, why would you want to do that on the daily? We should do that on the 10 minute. And it's like, no, I can't. The, the 10 minute is not, it's not as powerful as the daily. I want to know what the big move is. I don't want to know what can be altered by news quickly. Again, keep in mind during the day, headlines, rumors, all sorts of things. As the market plays out from, you know, 930 to four, all that time is filled with crap potentially. But the daily action proves to be more powerful. Same thing with the weekly and monthly. Hope this stuff is next level stuff for people. Because, again, the more I do these videos and the more I think people can actually interpret this stuff, we will be digging into deeper and more difficult topics. And, again, a lot of it starts with how to practice to get your edge. Same thing, channel low on the Qs. We talked about this. Now the Qs have been beaten. And if the TLT is going higher, yields are going lower, does it make sense? Look, you had a nice rally. You went a little higher. All right, where do you think the cues could go? Let's just say 325. I'm going to, you know, like, again, and people go, well, you never like to put price targets, and I, and I don't. You got to let it play out. But would it make sense if we made a higher high trap in a bear market? Yeah. Well, could it get to 335? I don't know. We'll see when we get there. Remember, it's the mid, you know, we have a couple weeks, maybe, maybe even a week. How high can we go? How, you know? Look at this move, remember? And then what if it ends up being, so that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Seven more days. Do the math. 325 might be the max. Just, I'm again, I'm trying to play the guess the next candle game in my mind in progression of how this is going to work out because a bear market rally is a pretty much a straight line move. Here was a mini one, reverberation. And again, if you know the rubber band man theory, what do you talk about? Chop, 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 real chop, tired, barely lower, low. Now you rally back. Trend change. Now people are going to go, well, well aren't, you, aren't you a bear long term? Yes, we are below the 20 month. We talked about that. Once you broke the, oh, sorry, this is the weekly. Meh, my bad. Talked about below the 20 month? Yes, but again, it's kind of crazy how it held our reference zone pretty well. What next? Again, we're. Could it get back to here, here you go? And if you want to, you know, think about support equals resistance. I think you can see what is it? This doji. I don't know. It just put it, put it, put this area in your mind. That makes sense. Notice what happened here. It took months. Could this take two months? Meaning June slash July? Maybe. 
uh, it's not that complicated but it is i hope people start to see that like you have to you have to like have lived this stuff like i can tell someone how to trade but it's like can you execute this no and so if we're on this journey together i, I tell people all the time don't try to get ahead of me and don't try to follow me walk with me you will learn way more if i'm your guide together versus you trying to tell me how you think you need to do things because again i'm different but if you want to learn from me you probably want to learn how i do things or if you're behind me just trying to like hey tell me what to do tell me what to do you don't learn anything you don't learn anything other than all right be dependent on me and i don't want you to be dependent on me or this board or this channel i want you to be self-reliant that's hard a lot of people don't want to teach that iwm again channel lows Slightly lower high. What's going on here? What makes sense? Maybe a slightly higher high. Here you go. 100 day. Uh-oh. Again, write this down. I mean, I'm writing these down as we speak again because I see I don't have time to review this all day. I'm saying 100 day. That's my upside target, right? It was the last bear market rally, right? 100 day. Look where it's at. It'd make a slightly higher high. Take you to 192. Write this down. Again, if you're not writing this down, you don't have a journal... Uh, you will not be able to remember this stuff. You just can't. You have to write this down. Again, your memory can only process but so many percentages, percentage points of what I'm telling you every day because it is a lot. It's a you know I, this is a fire hose. You're a sponge. You you can't pick it all up. So you write it down so you can re reference it. You put these targets. You have the journal to talk of you know to remind yourself of certain things of notes that we're talking about. You have price levels you put in comments on your trading platform say hey this is the upside potential this is where we're thinking this goes Let's see how this starts to mold gold it's literally the same thing every day oh dan you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong look at the volume down. no one cares about this and that's sad to me because honestly i think gold should be in the 2000 range minimum but we have to trade the market we have not the one we want we know gold is manipulated and I've said this a bazillion times because I was one of the first ones to predict this action by saying this looks like a monster cup and handle on the monthly. And look what happened. Now we're in the handle process. I'd love to see it under 160. Can we hold the trend line? Absolutely, but there's no guarantee. Let's wait. Wait, wait, wait. We say this every video. What are you waiting for, Dan? I want to see the market puke up because if it doesn't, it could just be choppy and sloppy. Maybe it gets back to 175 and people go, oh, you missed the move. And it's like, no. The move for me, I'm waiting for is this kind of move. I'm not waiting for this crap. I have no time for this. Because what could happen is you get into June, it just chops. Just chop, 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 chop. And then maybe it bottoms mid-December uh, mid like it always does. This phenomenon of mid-December bounce rallies is crazy. You see, you can see it here. You had a mid-rally, uh, sorry, mid mid-December rally again put here's your notes I'm, I'm i'm giving you a little hint here here you go uh nope that was it i'm just bleh, bleh, bleh. rain dead long day wife's doing better if you're interested mid-december boom write this down and never forget this trade in the rest for the rest of your life if you do one trade the rest of your life it's buy gold in mid-december you go buy gold mid-december on a pullback bow where I mean, I could every year. Do you see this? I'm giving you a tip. Mid December, bang. If you don't know why, we'll get into it when we get to mid December. I'll explain to you how this usually works. It has to do with tax rate, tax loss, write off selling. Mid December, bang. Do you see how I know gold? Like it's like a friend. I, I just it, it, to me, it's not interesting. Oh, look at that mid December, bang. I'll quit it with the the sound effects. But do you see what I'm saying right now? What if gold goes nowhere because the market is a bear market? It rallies some. Yeah, we get it. And people will say, well, could love to compare gold to everything else. And it's like, yeah, it's holding up. It's great. Absolutely great. But guess what? If there's other opportunities to trade things, you've got to leverage your opportunities. If gold's going nowhere, what is the trade? What's the nowhere trade? Sell calls, sell puts, or leverage trends, or leverage action in a trend. Again, I hope this helps. Silver, same thing. I'm watching this video online about how FedEx leads silver. And it's like, what the? What are you talking about? Silver doesn't give a crap about FedEx. Now, FedEx announced they would allow shipping of precious metals over whatever is $1,000, $1,100, and insure it. Now we're talking. But just FedEx leads silver. Ugh, my head about exploded watching these videos because there's so many people online who 
I don't know what the hell. I don't know how people follow them. Maybe I need to be extravagant and promise crazy things and just be right on one thing and then just never again recommend anything but be like, hey, follow me for more information about nothing. And that's maybe I guess that's how people get followers. I don't know. Not not interested. Someone attacked me yesterday about, oh, you have no followers. Guess what? I'm not here for the followers. Trust me. I don't need more crazies in my room. I need people who I'm not, not need. I want to help people who want to learn, not people who are like trying to fight every day about who's right and wrong. It's like, you're wrong. You don't make money. You're here in a room looking for help, but you're telling the teacher what to do. Get the hell out of here. I don't need you. I don't come into your work and tell you how to do your job. I don't come to you for advice and tell you you're wrong. What kind of, what planet are people on? Again, silver, the best time to buy it is puking of a market that's excess of liquidity blowing out. Here you go. 2008, boom. Here we go, COVID. Boom. Where are we at? No man's land. Now, again, if you can buy physical silver at the spot price, buy as much as you can. Sell. I'll buy some from you. I don't care. Mark it up a dollar. Whatever. It's good. I, I long-term love physical. The paper price action is going to be bullshit. People who know gold and silver know that. But, again, you ignore the evidence. That's on you. Yes, we know gold's manipulated. But I don't want to, like, pretend that I can somehow say that it won't be this time. Because that's, like... That's that's betting on the one-off. We like to bet on the, war, the the strong horse. Strong horse is the feds manipulate it until they don't. GDX, again, I like it down here. Is it due to bounce? <laughs> yeah, it can just do this stupid action. Mid-December. But then we even got a January. Boom! Hope you're starting to see, like, just this is why. I leave it alone. I look at the monthly. I go, wait. Here you go. COVID. Bam! 2008. Bam! Again, I say this in every video, but I feel like Gold and silver people ask me, what do you think about gold and silver? And I go, well, I'll tell you what I think, and I'll repeat it in the video every day because I love gold and silver. I will never miss this trade. Same thing, GDXJ, going nowhere. But people don't think that. They just, they, I don't know. They, they think maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, which is fair. I Trust me, the average person I would take on, take for trading advice, I would, I assume, know nothing either. So I, I don't blame them for that. I don't blame people for that thought process. AG, we talked about buying it down here. Bang! Up to 14s. We said problems, new lows, don't buy it. Now everyone's going, hey, look, it's up 5% today. Whoop the freaking do because I'm waiting for this kind of move. I don't want to be in this crap. I just don't. I just don't. I just don't. It's not there yet. And again, if until you know that you know, leave it alone. AM, I'm going to do this for all of the miners. Love them to death. And again, I put these names here because I like them long term. I think it's going under 40. When? I don't know. And it, again, if it's and if it bounces because it's holding yeah, yeah, yeah. this area, please don't get super excited. Don't come and start trolling and say you missed out because trust me. If I'm doing something else, it means gold just doesn't have the, the reason to get into it. I'm, I'm making more money in other places. That's just the rationality. You only can trade so much stuff. I don't have an unlimited size billion dollar account. I am a at home retail trader who has a finite amount of money because I'm constantly pulling money out of the market to buy real estate, buy and hedge my dollar allocations. I'm not a cash cash rich person. I don't want the biggest account in the world because I want more assets. Remember, this is a game where you a game where you take fake money basically, real you take gains and you put them into real assets. Stocks are not real assets. People go, what are you talking about? And it's like, no, because at any point the market could implode and all this stuff could be worth nothing. Gold, silver, metals, diamonds, real estate, oil will always be worth something because people need it. And FGC, same thing. People go, hey, do you think it's a buy down here? Uh, I don't know. I do know I like it down in the fours. It got the fours, and it is in the fours. But uh, again, that's on you. You pick your. You pick and this is what I say. Like you hit enter. You don't have to depend on me. Ah, same thing. I mean, it's making lower lows. Uh, is it a bear trap? Could it be like an awkward W and get back up to twenty three? If that's what gets you excited, is two or three points. Go right ahead. There's just better trades elsewhere, and we're gonna go into them. Expect here's a better trade. X. Again, I like steel. They're guiding up. They're literally guiding up. Silver and gold miners are not guiding up. Look at the action down here. You're compressing against reference highs. We went from 38. Oh, no, actually, it was a high. Yeah, 39. Sorry, my bad. Off by a point. Down, back down to where you started. This got a big bounce in it. And big bounce up to 22. 
I mean, again, if you were getting in at 18, and again, if you get excited about three points and you can leverage it, great. Personally, it could probably get up to 23, 25. It just depends. It really depends on the market. Again, I'm playing new core because it moves. It absolutely moves more. I like points. I don't like necessarily always percentages. I don't mind percentages if it's like Roth IRA, but if I'm going to leverage options and I'm going to leverage my trading accounts, I like points just as much as I like percentages. And if I'm trading options, I really like points because again, points can magnify very quickly. If you buy a call on something and it go, it can go up hundreds of percentage pretty quickly as the points are not necessarily a huge percentage of the stock. I hope that makes sense. Whereas if you buy a cheap stock and it goes up one or two points percentage wise, yes, you can do really well. And it all is relative, but 10% of is two points versus 10% of something that might be 20 or 30 points. You do the math. You potentially can make a lot more with options if something moves 20, 25 points versus two points. Hope that makes sense. Again, it's not like there's not a perfect correlation here. It's just you're trading volatile assets. You want something that's volatile. This is a big move. 188 down to 10, was it three? They just guided out. Again, I'll show you what they said. Literally, come check this out. This is absolutely hilarious. Please don't go. Yeah, here we go. They guided up last week. Hit pause, check it out. They literally guided up. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily the stock has to go higher because trust me, I know fundamentals don't mean shit. But don't you think today's action? And, and again, I don't think people realize this. Is You had this anomaly down here, stopping power. You popped up. You came right back. Novice gap, and now we're flipping it around. I, people need to see why I'm buying this stuff. Here you go. Big down move. How do you pick a bottom? Multi-gaps, chop, one more gap, exhaustion. Now you're at the channel, right? You're at the channel lows, right? Channel lows, hello, hello, hello. Risk versus reward, down 80-something points. Okay, now what? Watch for the action. Compressed the last two days. People are like, you're crazy buying out here. You had a doji. Then you had a... a Again, you literally close at the trend. And now look, you gapped up and you close at the highs. That is bullish. If you had to predict the next candle, you're looking at something like this kind of pattern repeating. So it could go 123 up to 137, 138. Do the math here. Say it goes from 104 up to 125. I don't know. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's draw some trend lines just for like shits and giggles. Just in case they actually matter. That's ooh, that's super tight. Let's see what happens. Like it a lot. All right, Valet. Same thing again. I like these cheap names, but I if you're playing with stock, yes. If you're playing with options, I like these better. Because I think they'll move, you know, not these. I like new core better because I think it can move 20, 30 points. You could buy some really dirt cheap options and they could go up a thousand percent very quickly. You can buy lottos, or you can play the safe calls deep in the money like I do, and it plays as stock, and it goes one for one. But what it, Again, options, there is a million different strategies. Stop by the Discord room in time. We will get into it. I just first have to make sure people know how to actually trade because if you give people options, it's like giving them a gun and then teaching them how to do it is the bullets. If they don't actually know how to play the market to win, I'm giving you a loaded gun, and you probably are going to put your eye out at worst. Here you go. Lower high, some volume down here. Not a. I, eh, let me. I think you can see there's something going on here. No, not even that. I don't know. It's just the market. If the market's going to rally, will valet bounce? Probably. It has a tendency of making higher highs and lower lows before reversing. Lower low reversed. Higher high reversed. Lower low reversed. Right. That's the tendency. Let's see if it sticks. Again, guess the next candle in Valet. It likes to do something a little extreme before. I talk about this all the time. Stocks have personalities based on liquidity, the market makers, all sorts of things. It's not cut and dry. CCJ. Hey, good news about on uranium. Endlessly good news. Again, are the fundamentals there? Eh. Yes, absolutely. But is the price action? Eh, no. And the people are saying, oh, you didn't buy it down here, you idiot. I, I said you could. I just don't... We'll, we'll see. Again, I think this stuff could be stuck in the mud. Maybe new core is not the best trade. I don't know because maybe it's a material name. That's why we got some tech. Keep that in mind. That's why we got some tech. We're not necessarily diversifying, but I feel like I'm picking the best. 
stuff, personally. And again, if CCJ bounces, I am, I'm all happy for it. I just don't think about it from the sense of the major upside. Because we talked about, you had to sell up here. We bought along the major trend line. I really think there's a bear market, just like you had in, you know, where is the COVID action? Oh, hey, cat. Where was Oh, yeah, it was right here. Wipeout, and then a go. Could the wipeout take it down to 16? That would be a gift. You guys know it. You, you friends of mine, you know it. Arrow. Someone was asking me about this yesterday. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty damn cheap. It's gotten absolutely smushed. Smushed. And here you go. You got an engulfing bar, but I don't like the volume on this day being lighter than this day, but maybe it's stopping power with that wick. I'd have to dig into it a little deeper. Let's look real quick. Get the 10 minute on this computer. Uh, yeah, you got an anomaly here. How do I turn? I forgot how to turn off all sessions. Uh, 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 sorry. I haven't altered my charts in so long. It's rather embarrassing, actually. I could Google it. Uh, whatever. What is that? that? Yeah, I don't even alter my charts. It, I, I'll just draw on them. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, nice little gap up after hours. That's a decent amount of little shares. No, maybe not. 5,000 shares. Anyway, sorry. Tangent. Brant. Yes, it's oversold. Check the downside. Like, check it. We talked about it hitting maybe down in the eights. People probably reference it. Yes, look at the volume here. Somebody, somebody call a ambulance. We got some volume. May have done some secondary action. I don't know. I don't follow this as closely as some of the other names. I'll dig into it later. But again, I like this down here. Copper has long term commodity strength. All right, we pulled a, speaking of Mosaic and CF, speaking of commodities, bought some of this today. Why? This whole phenomenon of, you, it's an engulfing bar, leave it alone. Remember this last engulfing bar? Booyah. See that? Here was one, you went a little over. Booyah. Again, it's, the market likes to trick people here. The volume is pretty high. No one's going to argue that, right? Let me see if I can pull up the 120. Because there are some anomalies down here. What are you doing? What are you doing, silly? Oh, what happened? Oh, gosh. Um, all right. Nothing wrong. Check this out. Look at this anomaly here, right? Look at that. Tight, 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 tight. You make a lower low, wipe out, and then you start rising on lighter volume. That, to me, says near term, I think we're done. You go zoom out. Check out the monthly friends. This thing's gone from 80 down to 45. Said maybe you could get to channel lows, but if the market's not dropping, channel lows ain't a knocking. And again, I've got channel uh, uh, trend lines here. I think I just spotted the, the actual real trend line, maybe. Oh, you son of a biscuit. I knew something. Because again, I, I don't draw on this computer. I draw it all live for you guys. My other computer, I don't share. There we go. Here's the trend. Um, let me tighten it up. No, that's not it. What did I just do? All right, whatever. Close enough for government work, right? I'll I'll tighten that up another time. This isn't the time to do it. Again, big move. You got some action down here in golfing bar. Everyone's bearish. It's at the lows. Now what? Going into a rising market. This thing will rise with a rising market. We know that. So again, it might not be the biggest mover. We'll see. If, but if it goes from 55 up to 66, maybe it goes from, what, 44, 40, wait, no, 45. I mean, would you take it up to 60? I think I would. I wouldn't be that mad. Now, again, there might be better trades. But, hey, you can only do so many things. You don't know until you bet it. All right, here's another name in the sector. Look at this. Engulfing bar. Look at that volume. Someone had stopping power. Here we go. Again, if you see this in other names, just be aware. People like the sector matters. AMD. Here we go. Bullish tech. Wow. You've been bearish tech forever. Well, guess what? Look at this action. Basing in the queues. We saw the queues. I, I said this target zone was going to hit. It just didn't get that deep into it. Now we're rallying. Look at today's action. Even if the volume is light, you ate up this whole bearish complex here. Made a new high. Bullish. Apple. Said this a couple days ago. Something's going on down here. Professional gap. Booyah. Going higher. Keep in mind, that's what tech does. We talked about this was the time to short. That was a awesome 
bear market rally. And look at that, 150 up to, what is it, 179? Could Apple pull a 30-pointer here? Could it go from 130 to 150 to 160? Anything is possible. All right, let's get into Meta because people were like, you're crazy to buy this. Again, engulfing bar, tight, tight, tight. Here we go, rising volume, expanding, going higher. Channel lows, check this out on the monthly. Channel lows, 0.618. This is such an easy trade. And again, if you can't show this to a six-year-old or a 12-year-old, like, you know, whatever, pick someone young and can't see how obvious something is, then neither the, the market can't see it either. You have to remember, you and I, you, you, me, you, meaning the person watching this video, is probably a little smarter than the average trader. If they can't see it, it's not really there. I hope that sticks. Channel low, here we go. First resistance, 178, 50-day potentially, maybe even channel highs. And people go, whoa, 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 you are getting way too excited. Well, it's like, no, look at the previous time. Channel low, up to the 100 day. Channel low, channel high. Channel low, up to the 50 day. We've got room. The 20 day might be the chop zone, but I feel like once we get over the 20 day, especially if we have expanding volume, look what you got up to. Channel high. Note to self, Facebook. Expanding volume, probably going higher. And again, what you know, talk about Kramer, talk about anti Zuckerberg, whatever. Doesn't matter. I hate this company, but I like money. And this is going higher. I'm going to write it. Uh, Roblox, here you go. Here's a company we identified for you. We said this thing was acting well. We said, here's the bottom. And then look, you made a higher low. Oh, yeah. So once you get over the 50 day, going, 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 going. And here we go. Expanding volume. I know the candle might be a little tight. But we'll see. It is. It has moved pretty quick. 24 to 36. You do the math. That's 50% very easily. Who knows? I feel like it might get bought out. I've said this a bazillion times. Tesla. People are like, I want to short it. It's like, uh, don't short it. Tech is just, again, I said maybe this is a W pattern. And tech is holding. Rates go lower. I've said this a bazillion times. Trying to play out or lay out the actual anticipation of what's coming. Wait for the 800s. Maybe it's the downtrend. Don't short it now. Just do me a favor. All right. EXPI, great company. Here's an example of fundamentals not mattering. This could happen to Nucor or Mosaic. Chopping at the lows. It looks like it's due to bounce, though. UTHR, here you go, friends. Here's another example of us dropping dimes. Double bottom, W pattern, Wu-Tang. Another double bottom, Wu-Tang. Booyah. Again, look how long it took to play out. But, oh, wow. whoa, whoa. Then you made a test back to the old breakout. This is where how simple this stuff. You back test the old breakout, the 20 day, boom, you make another higher high. I, again, I haven't traded this personally, but I've walked you through the trade. And again, I, I don't like biotechs. I'm sticking to commodities, which might be stupid at times. But it's not like you can't see this stuff coming. Again, this is a Mikey French special. This is, I think his wife works for this company. Awesome. A boom. How you like them apples? All right, let's talk about USO day because there's a trading opportunity. You put drop this dime in the Discord room. Said what? You held the channel lows. Don't be surprised. You can press under the 50 day. Everyone's like, ah, it's got to drop. It's got to drop. Look at that. Came right back. I, trading's hard sometimes. That's why I'm like, don't chase it because someone's like, oh, I'm gonna roll my XOP into USO puts in short via SCO. I'm like, ah, uh, wait. I, again, I am very confident we're going to go lower in time. Keep in mind, like, look at 2008. Ah Recession. COVID. Ah Remember, this is deteriorating fun. This is why I like puts on this piece of crap. Where are we at? Double top. Ah Be careful. Slightly higher high. Break out. Fail. Back down to channel. Watch this stuff. Again, could it, it could it fill the gap at 83, 84? I mean, could go, oil get essentially back to 110, 108 area? Always possible. Just be smart. Don't chase. Again, if oil presents itself to a perfect short, I will short it. XOP. People are like, oh, you didn't call the bottom on this. I said, watch this level at 124, 125. I said, watch what happens if you get down here. Again, I'm not saying... And people mistake this all the time. I'm saying take your profits. If you traded this down, this is like, this, this is too fast, too furious. That's why I put this like head and shoulders 
pattern complex. It's probably going to bounce. But again, it doesn't have to if oil drops. But the easy money, this is this is the easy trade. What happens if it leads to choppy sloppiness and you could have bought and shorted or acted on other names? You have to recognize at times there's just... You move on. You move to the next trade. Let this come to you. Again, if you were shorting down here by a drip and you're trading this aggressively and it goes nowhere, I feel bad. That's on you. Uh, Exxon Mobil. Here's another one. Um, Silver Sleuth. Good, good trade on this. He's traded the 50-day. I personally thought gap fill. Eh, wrong. However, what happened? You failed there. You dropped 91 down. What was it? 84. Nice trade. Now you're at another channel low. This could get choppy. I just, I'm just warning you. Because the market's going to probably like to see oil drop. And if oil drops, even if it pops, and it doesn't really mess the matter. These names, to me, I think have peaked. Point is, these names could just go sideways. You have to have that in your mind. Because, again, if you believe that, and this is no different than me saying, hey, stay away from gold. Stay away from, stuff goes sideways, goes soft. If you don't understand that about the market, again, I mean, you're just delusional. Because the market does what? Up a third of the time, down a third of the time, sideways a third of the time. Now, again, the amplitude of each depends on what kind of market you're in. Bull market, the up moves are going to be stronger, right? Bear market, the down moves. But there's always chop. UNG, here's another thing. This is why we think oil and gas will go lower. Look at this sucker. Broke the upper pennant, fail below the 100-day. Now, again, it could bounce. Wait to short it. Maybe even get it, and here you go. You want the trade to short UNG. Maybe buy a little co cold, K-O-L-D. Wait for this to get into 23s. Minimum. Minimum. Valero, again, we talked about this. I was laughing because it was trading at 27 times earnings with margins as thin as one of my beard hairs. And we hit, what, the monthly channel highs? You don't know. Here you go. 12-year-old can see this. Bam! Now what? Monster engulfing candle, right? Monster. It's probably going to lead to lower, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it couldn't rally. See here, there's the long wick on that. Hopefully, again, I'm painting the picture here. Look at this volume. Holy crap. There's probably going to be a counter rally. Market makers got to got, gotta get you back into it, maybe. When I say you, I mean retail. Like, hey, you got to get back into it. Buy this. is going to the moon. Chevron, same thing. It's oversold. People go, oh, oversold. Well, how do you reference that? And it's like, just compare it to the market. I mean, or where it's come from. 182 down to 140. Big move. Said, where's uh, where's our, our friend? PXD. Same thing. We're like, God, you got to be careful here. Here we go. Hit our range lows. We, we drew the box. Said maybe the 200 day. That's didn't get there, but close enough for government work. This is why we say the more you're up, the less you own. 290. What was it? High 288 down to 222. Do the math. That's a big move pretty quickly. EQT, the big culprit of the XOP. Bazam. 50 down to 30. Freaking two. Probably due to bounce. All right, folks, again, I hope this stuff helps. Hopefully, like, again, if you watch this one time and you didn't get a full page of notes like I am writing down as we speak, I don't know what you're doing. You're just listening for comfort. You're just listening for, I don't know, like leisure. Again, I mean, if you pretend this is actually an assignment. Like, And again, backtest to me. Backtest yourself. Even if you don't use what I'm saying, you've got to start becoming good at predicting the market. Use me or not, I don't care. I will be wrong. People know that. Everyone's going to be wrong. There's no one out here who's perfect. Again, if you study the winning percentage of the best traders, nobody's perfect. So, again, let's play together. And hopefully you realize, like, wow, the guy does hit 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 at certain points. Like, he's pretty good. Again, day trading, mm, not as great because, again, it's it's a lower hanging fruit. I hope this helps. Good. Love you guys. Appreciate all of your support in the channel. Again, the more time I spend here with you guys, again, the more fun I have trading as well. But I think, again, I'm trying to help you make money as I'm making money, ideally. And, the, and then, again, you have to give to receive. Greedy people, they get stolen from. People who are generous typically get the universe's rewards. That's what I'm thinking. Because, again, the more I help people, the more it seems like I trade better. Things seem more obvious. These videos, as well as they are important for you, they are well as important for me. Because reiterating the same talking points, knowing the market, anticipating things, and repeating it to yourself is gangster. It is so strong. All right. Talk to you later.
Have a great weekend. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, stop by the Discord room. A link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support more free content, your PayPal link is in the description as well. I appreciate your continued support of the channel.